In this video, I'm going to take a look at this new product called Integromat. It's a alternative, a competitor to Zapier. And I'm going to build a live, what they call scenario, to connect Pocket with Slack and show you my experience. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, this is David with TechSmart Boss here with another video. I found a new product called Integromat. Dot com seems to be a competitor with Zapier and IFTTT and those sorts of products. It looks pretty interesting. They have a couple features that Zapier doesn't have, like this router option where you can route into different streams. You can do parallel processing. I thought that was pretty interesting. And when you look at their pricing, they have, they have you know they have a pretty decent price. Um, it looks like here. Uh, and, and, you know, overall, it's, it's, it's something worth taking a look at. They don't have as many apps, even though they say they have unlimited apps because they can connect to any HT, um, any JSON or XML type of feed. But they do have a lot of the ones out of the box. So what I'm going to do is put this to the test on a, on a, um, a package, they call it, not a zap. And I'm going to do a connection between, uh, let's see, I'll do pocket to Slack. So anytime I do po uh, do a uh, save a web page to my pocket, I'm gonna send a notification to Slack. That should be simple enough, and they have the um, the apps out of the box to do that. So let's go ahead and sign up, and see if we can do a test of this. So I'm gonna put in my TechSmart Boss email here and a password. They say you can sign up without having to put in a credit card, which I always appreciate. So I'm going to just go rogue here and skip their onboarding tutorial and get right into it. And wow, looks like a lot of uh, a lot of information here on their dashboard. Now, they call them scenarios. So the, instead of zaps, they have scenarios here and looks like quite a lot of information here that you could do. I'm going to jump right into it and do a scenario. Uh, Let's pick uh, our trigger is going to be pocket. So anytime we save a web page in pocket, we want to do something with it. So let's pick that as our trigger. Okay, we're going to hit continue. And let's go ahead and click on the question mark here. And that should allow us to connect. Now we haven't connected an account yet, but... Um, I'm sure we'll get there. So since this is my trigger, it looks like they have a good set of triggers and actions and searches, very similar to Zapier. I'm going to watch for when a new item is created. So Pocket's going to be my trigger. Here we go. Add a connection. All right. Now I've gone ahead. I've logged in this browser into my Pocket and Slack in preparation for this video. So I'm kind of hoping that it will read those credentials. Let's take a look. And yep. Looks like it does. So I'm going to go ahead and authorize my pocket account to talk with these people at Integromat. There it is. Uh, now, what is this? State. Uh, looks like I've got some. Uh, okay, so this is what's going to trigger. I'm going to just say all. And it looks like you could do some filtering, like specific tags and things like that. So this is pretty nice. They've got some of this stuff right up front on the trigger versus with uh, Zapier, you kind of trigger it on everything and then you filter it after the fact. So, and look, you could even do it by domain. So some pretty, I mean, this is some pretty good power. I'm just gonna keep it simple and do all on that. And then where do you wanna start? And uh, this is pretty nice too, that you can select manually your starting point. You can kind of do backwards dating things by saying all the items already in there or from a specific date. So again, I'm seeing some things that are missing in Zapier, Zapier which, which looks pretty nice. Here. I'm going to do it from now on because I'm going to trigger this based on a, a brand new pocket save that I do. All right. So now I've got that in there. Now let's see what I do. I want to add another module. Here it is. And in this one, I'm going to bring in my Slack. So let's scroll down. So here you can kind of see the long list of apps. It'd be nice to have a search to get right down to my S's. But there's Slack right there. Okay, so now I'm in my actions. So lots of actions on Slack, which is great. And there's some couple things here where you can do like retrieving messages. That's pretty nice there. What I'm going to do is I want to send 
a direct message. Let's see if we can find something like that. Um, add, okay, I could add, add a star. Create a message. There we go. Create a private channel. I want to create a message. I'm assuming it's going to... Okay, so let's go ahead and add my Slack connection. I'm logged in this browser into Slack, so let's see if it detects that. It does. Perfect. Let's authorize. So that's one tip I give you when you do these things. Just log into the things in your browser. It'll make it a little bit easier as you're setting these up. Now, where to send the message? I want to send this to, ideally, to Slackbot, but it uh, looks like I can send to a specific user. And it's going to look up my user. I'm going to send it to myself. Um, all right. And now I can put in some text on what I want to send. And it looks like it's automatically bringing in all the items that it's going to pull in from Pocket, which is nice. So generally, I would want to give put in the, the title. Looks like a couple titles here, but I'm going to... I'm going to put in the given title, and I'm going to put in the URL, of course, and that's probably about all that I need to put in on this particular um, Slack. So I'll just put some words in front here, new pocket ad, like that. And it looks like, let's just click it on a couple of these, it looks like you could do formulas, which is pretty nice, you could do math functions. So, I'm seeing a lot of power here. You know, the, the the interface is not as intuitive. It's not like it's unintuitive, but it's, it's just a lot to explore. So these are all things that I would probably want to come back in and spend a whole lot more time. This seems to be have seems to have a lot of power compared to uh, more of a power tool compared to some others. I, I just expanded that advanced options. And, you know, look, there's a lot, even more stuff that I can do there. So what I'm seeing right now is, is power. Hopefully it works. So let's just, let's test that out. So I'm going to hit OK to this. Now, uh, I could go through and add a bunch of other modules. I could add these things called routers. Um, so you can see here I can bring in a filter. So, it's, again, it's a lot of power here. Um, I can run this manually. And let's run it. It shouldn't actually. I haven't saved anything, so I don't think. I think it'll probably check my pocket and see that. Um, yeah, it was running and it didn't find anything. So what I'm going to do? Let's go out to pocket. I'm going to pocket my website, yerby.com, and let's add that to pocket. And I'll tag it uh, website. All right, now let's run it and see what happens. Hey, look at that. I got a Slack notification. So it appears to have worked. There it is. New pocket ad, the name of the website, and the URL. That was pretty fast. So now, from what I understand, let's look at these icons over here. I can save this. And as I save this, the scenario has been saved it says let's look at the scenario settings because there's somewhere in here i can actually set how often i want this to to run and things like that let's see save let's go back uh let's click on my scenarios here ah here we go so i saved it but it's not turned on yet so what i want to do is actually toggle this to be on and I believe that is going to now run every, uh, let's uh, click on this and see. Yeah, I think, I think I've got it. Let's uh, look at the options here. There we go. What I was looking for is looking at the scheduling options because I saw on their website where it looks like by default now it's going to run this every 15 minutes. But you can see you can set this up to run once a day, days of the week, days of the month. You've got a little bit more power in terms of execution. And uh looks like on the free plan, it must be higher than 15. So I'm on the free plan. But when you do any of their paid plans, I saw where the execution time was every minute, which is faster than Zapier. Uh, so all in all, I would say that this is a pretty intriguing tool. 
Uh, they seem to be coming out with a lot of power features that Zapier doesn't have, doing some things with um, scheduling, doing some things with the uh, parallel processing and the router feature. Uh, they got a better price, and there's a whole lot here to explore. So I'm probably going to take some time and look through this some more, do some more videos on this product. But overall, I would say so far, this looks like a winner. So definitely something you could take a look at as a as an alternate to Zapier if the price point of Zapier or some of those limitations um, are a little bit too much for you. If you like videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out some of our other videos. Also like us out on Facebook. We're putting videos out there and a whole bunch of content as well. And stay tuned. We'll be back with another video real soon.